on surgery uh, in the final MBBS series. So basically, surgery is a subject which deserves a lot of emphasis on how to make notes as well. Uh, first things first, when you get your textbook, divide it into two halves. Make one for general surgery and make another half for uh, systemic surgery or paper two, whatever is easier. And secondly, when to make notes? Uh, this is uh, probably the most important question to be answered and the answer is pretty simple. Make notes whenever it takes you extremely long to finish a topic. And what I mean by that is if you read it the first time and it took you a long time to finish it, like two or three days, try to make notes on it so that it won't take you two or three days the next time you read it. And things you have to have before starting off your notes. First things first, you need your textbook again, uh, preferably if it's divided. Secondly, you need pens. Blue and black are enough, but uh, you can use other colors if you are extremely enthusiastic about it. And thirdly, and the most important thing you need is your presence of mind. There is no point writing notes if you're not going to be present while writing them and reorganize what is already present in the book. You're not writing these notes to memorize the things already present in the book. You're writing them so you understand them better. So there are a lot of kinds of notes that people make and uh, surgery is one subject where notes are probably more, more helpful than anything else. But uh, the main three kinds of notes we end up using were proper notes as in full length uh, complete topic notes and then flashcards and then papers that we just stuck in the textbook because it was an accurate summary of one portion of a topic actual proper length notes these are notes which you revise completely before an exam uh, as in if it was an essay you would have the complete essay in your hands the night before the exam and topics we ended up making notes that were full length were for uh, shock from mangitis obliterans and topics in breast topics in urology and kidney so these are my notes on thrombangitis obliterans, which is uh, also known as Berger's disease. Uh, an example of how your notes should be is have a definition and then an etiology along with an etiopathogenesis. It's like it's simpler if you combine both, but you have to have separate headings at some point. And then a classification if there is one for the particular condition we're talking about clinical features which can be differentiated into symptoms and then signs signs should be ideally classified under inspection palpation and there is usually no percussion and uh, auscultation in um, surgery so definitely focus on those and then when you come you have to come to an investigation uh, you have to have the generalized investigations that almost every uh, case requires especially in surgery and then specific investigations in which you have to have specific information related to the pertaining condition and finally come up with different shorts within this question try to finish as much as you can for example Raynaud's phenomenon is its own two or four mark question so focus on different aspects within the same question things that are related to it and then finally your treatment treatment can usually be known as conservative and invasive so be sure about how invasive your procedure is or how important uh, the precursor conditions are or like precursor management is before you actually dive into a surgery and that's that Flashcards are a different set of notes which require some attention and why you're making them. Flashcards are meant for topics that you can easily confuse with another topic. For example, intestinal obstruction, there are a bunch of causes and a bunch of different treatments within intestinal obstruction. But if you make flashcards for each and every single one, you will have a guide as to how to write everything the night before the exam, especially the differences, especially uh, what sets apart radiologically these different kinds of intestinal obstruction. 
now for how to make flashcards uh, and like i mentioned in the video already uh, intestinal obstruction was one particular concept that i needed flashcards for and what i mean by this is all of them have different associations different investigations different types different pathologies which it's better to write on the flashcard for example in uh, pyloric stenosis congenital pyloric stenosis these are particular signs if you can see them uh, which i wrote so that i would be able to write it in an exam the very next day and some things have different managements so it's better to know that this sigmoidopexy is a particular treatment of volvulus than to not know anything at all and that's about flashcards uh, please excuse the number of highlights and underlines in the book i think you get my point <laughs> so the next example is pages stuck in a textbook uh, the topic that I ended up doing this for was acute appendicitis. Now, etiology and pathogenesis were something I did not need further explanation on. But what I ended up making notes were for clinical features, uh, which I wanted organized according to the science on the book, but not the same order because the same order would have meant I would have forgotten a few. I organized them according to my preference. And then I also meant, ended up making a particular paper for just investigations like you know if not in the textbook I have it in a piece of paper and differential diagnosis this is probably what I'm most proud of because I organized the differential diagnosis as a GIT condition a urinary condition a male reproductive condition respiratory and female reproductive so this helped me remember all of those causes right before the exam and finally, uh, also the treatment procedure. Oh, I guess I put that ahead of this. Ultimately, I also wrote the ac acute appendicitis operation and how you end up performing it. Because while you might forget the actual operation's name, you should know the steps. Definitely like, share and subscribe. And also follow us on our social media pages. The links are also in the description box.